First of all, we want to say congratulations to all the 2020 grads. I know they did the drive through the tonight and the drag of the main. Congratulations. I'm sorry that you don't get to walk down the uh, aisle and pick up your diploma, but I'm sure the virtual version will be just as cool. Uh, I went to Sapporo's tonight. Things are opening back up. I went to Sapporo's. We had to have our social distancing between tables, but we was able to eat a meal in a restaurant. It was so nice for not being able to do that for about a month. Um, we're doing a live tonight. We're, we're going to get people on. We're going to let everybody know that we're, we're going out and we're, we're enjoying our, ourselves. I want to do a shout out first of all, to my producer, Jost. He did our controls tonight, doing a great job. I appreciate him for doing it. I also want to thank our guest right before she comes on. I'm excited to interview her. Um, she's a close friend to our family. She's done the preschool for our, our son, our middle son, and we're excited to have her on tonight. Um, let's go ahead and bring her on, Miss Heidi Schudel. Hey, Heidi, how are you? Hey, Lance, I'm good. How are you doing? Doing good. Hey, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I could do that. Um, so I grew up in Soda Springs, Idaho. Perfect little town. If you ever want a really cool place to go, uh, they have <laughs> world's only man-made geyser. And uh, we also have carbonated water that comes right out of the ground. So look, grew up there and then I got married and had four kids and we moved out to Wyoming almost 11 years ago. We absolutely love it out here. What brought you to Wyoming? Actually, what brings most people work. <laughs> so my work. husband had a job here. So that's what brought us out. Awesome. How long ago did you start your preschool? Nine years ago. Nine. Oh my goodness. What kind of credentials do you have to do to, uh, to get educated to do a preschool? So of course it's always, you can always get a degree in it, early childhood education, but there is no actual uh, mandatory uh, degree to have, but there are a lot of hoops you've got to hop through to be able to have a business in Wyoming to be licensed by the state and with DFS as well as the city. And uh, there's a couple hundred page rule book <laughs> you gotta follow and gotta get approved by the city. There's a lot of rules to be able to have kids in the house and a certain amount of space that you have to have. And uh, just, there's, there's a lot of rules. So you gotta follow them every year. DFS comes every year a couple times. Lots of little things you have to do to be able to keep a license. Um, on that On that note, keeping your license in the state of Wyoming, is it, is it pretty difficult to get um, through all those rules? You said there was quite a, several hundred pages of rules. Um, <laughs> yes. How, how did you exactly. learn all that? I mean, and, and they do update it. So it's like codes in plumbing. They do something like that. Uh, probably so, yes. So like we just had a, another one that came out that we had to do on expulsion. And so we had to have a training on what is allowed with expulsion. And it was written into law last, I believe, October. And so then we had to write it into our policies so that we can follow the rules. So we have, it, it's pretty, it was pretty intense. Uh, my friend that I actually started a preschool with, she had a lot more hoops to jump through than I did because her house was just laid out a little different than mine. So she, it took months to get approved from the city for her. Whereas for me, I had one thing I had to change to get approved. And so then with DFS, there's a little bit more, of course, your background check. You have to have your fingerprints, your TB test, all of those things, of course. And then we keep our license by doing 16 starch credits a year. So we're constantly doing continuing education. And so there's, there's uh, every year they send me a pretty big packet full of stuff I've got to do to validate my license. So, you know, I got to have the fireman come over, the health inspector come over. So uh, just just a bunch of little things to make sure these kids are safe. If, if you were doing it in another building, would it be as, as many rules and, and routines or would it be a lot easier? You know, I, I'm not entirely sure because I think it gets harder the more people you have. And so because then, you, you know, you've got a lot more people underneath you who have to meet all of these requirements, who have to have a lot more uh, like I don't have to since I don't have an employee. I don't have to worry about some of the stresses that come with that. Um, the one thing that's kind of weird 
in Wyoming is that they consider all preschools underneath the umbrella of daycare. And so that's really why the rule book is so big. So the daycares have actually a lot harder because, you know, they've got to make sure the cribs are only, you know, two feet apart or whatever it is. Like there's, there's so many more rules for them. And so it's, you know, thankfully for me, it's not, it's not near as difficult because I don't have quite as many rules to follow, but definitely daycares and anytime you get employees underneath you, you're going to have a lot more to do. So keeping it just you and keeping it in your home might actually be a benefit. Oh, it's huge. And not only that, it's huge because I'm able to offer very small and intimate groups. I only have classes of eight kids, which is huge in being able to make sure these kids get a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. I try really hard to, I don't want to be so big that they aren't getting what, like a real deep, intimate learning and teaching sessions. And so it's, it's great because I can work with them one-on-one, -on -one, we can work in groups. So we have this constant opportunity to just really mesh together, the kids and me. And I mean, by the end, every year, we're just family. You know, it was fun watching Enzo come to your, your preschool because I saw that. You know, you, I dropped him off and I'd come back and, bye, Miss Heidi. And, you know, all the kids were saying <laughs> goodbye. And, and, and that's cool because they get to know you on that intimate level. And then they get to see you, you know, um, around as well, around town. I'm sure they, they see you and they get all excited when they see you. Um, I know that there's a lot of requirements going into kindergarten for preschoolers now. What do you got to do to stay on top of that? So there is not necessarily anything that I have to do. Like we don't have a curriculum that we have to follow, but I always try to be up on the latest. And so I'm always studying, always looking to see what I can improve, what I can do to give them a solid, solid foundation. And so not only is the academic that I want to give them, but also a social and emotional foundation so that they can really, really go in with us with just a really strong confidence in who they are and in their capabilities and in their ability to make friends or say sorry or have empathy for others, but also, you know, not not be behind so that they can have a leg up really to be able to succeed the best that they possibly can. Now, um, you said that there's no set curriculum, but how, how are you learning what the kindergartens are doing? Cause they are changing all the time. Is there a website you go to, or do you talk to the, to the individual kindergarten teachers? I mean, how, how does that work? Thankfully I have a lot of contacts. So not only was my sister a kindergarten teacher for years and years, she just barely moved up to fourth grade. So I was constantly in contact with her of the latest things that are coming out but I also have a lot of teacher friends and parents who stay in contact long after their kids have graduated from me and so we have a lot of just a lot of dialogue that always takes place so that I I can see what is needed to be done but I'm also an avid studier and so there's definitely an educational world out there <laughs> that I can I can find out the latest things of, of things that I need to be doing. Awesome. What's one of your favorite things about preschool? Oh, the kids, <laughs> the kids. <laughs> the, I just, I love the kids. I, I think four year olds, it's the best age in the entire planet. And I just, they, I think they, every uh, parent would disagree with you. <laughs> 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 well, I would just adopt them all of my good. Oh, I just, I just <laughs> love them. So I, I, the one thing I probably, I literally made the shirt. Hello, my name is Hey Teacher, because all I hear is Hey Teacher, Hey Teacher. It's probably like the one thing I don't like. I'm like, I have a name. <laughs> but, but other than that, I, I just, the stories that they tell are hilarious. And I mean, you wouldn't believe what I get told, but it's a good thing I, I know how to keep it under the belt, <laughs> but it's just well, so fun. You know, like they're, they, they believe everything I say, they still believe in magic. They still believe, you know, they're young enough to still love Mickey mouse. And yet they're advanced enough to be able to really grasp, grasp new concepts. And it like, when you watch their, their mind just like go and the connection happens, it's just, it is the most incredible thing to be able to witness and be part of. So do you and, think if, and, if, if that aspect of the kids wasn't there, would you be more and more inclined to go to a different age level? 
I don't know. <laughs> I just, uh, cause that, that's the that aspects always there. <laughs> so I, I would have a really hard time going to public school to, to, to own the truth because I, I work so hard to give the kids what they need. Every year I'm constantly revamping based off of the level of the children. So there's no, it's never set in stone. And so I'd have a really hard time having a, this is what you have to do when this, I have a lot of liberty to go, okay, this class needs this. So we're going to hone in on this and this class needs this. And yeah, it's a lot more work to separate it for classes and work on one curriculum for this class and one curriculum for this class, but it's worth it because then I'm giving them what they need. And the so you can more individualize it. So you I can do. more individualize, I very much individualize it. it. Yes. That's I try awesome. really hard to work on what they need as a, as a whole, try to find a middle ground for each class and, and then just have a ton of fun, you know, like education should be fun. And that's what we try to do. We try to hit every aspect of education and uh, a whole bunch of values and virtues so that they just, they just leave just with a really strong sense of self in every aspect. And I, I think one of the things I try the hardest is to make sure each kid feels understood and on their level, like be aware of if they're having a bad day or, you know, if they're an introvert or they're an extrovert and, and just be aware of what, what do you need so that I can meet that need and so they can really feel like they're being understood. Do you think that they learn faster do incorporating that type of system? Oh, for sure. It's there's there's certain there's certain um, methods I found to be the most effective for teaching academically, but definitely by far the most powerful thing that we could do for each other is to listen and be feel like you've been heard, right? Anytime you feel like you've been understood, you're going to open up your heart more. You're going to be more willing to listen and understand and, and, and even speak out and say your opinions. And like, it's just, you're just going to blossom. And I think that's, you can see that in any relationship, but uh, can especially see it in, in little four-year-olds. That's awesome. That's absolutely awesome. What, what's one of your favorite activities to do with the kids? Hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> I know you do a lot. I do. And I'm like, wow, what's my favorite? Um, I love parties. I love having my parties with them. I love doing crafts with them. This year, I mean, it's just it's kind of simple, but they're obsessed with hopscotch this year. And usually <laughs> kids aren't interested in hopscotch. And they are like beg to go outside and draw us a hopscotch, draw us a and I'm like, okay. So we I'm surprised kids hopscotch. still know what a hopscotch is. Right? I'll be honest with you. I mean, in nine years, this is the first year of obsession. You know, it's like I usually draw one and it, I do it once and they're not interested. And this year it's just like constant, like, can we do it again? Can we do it again? And so just getting out and playing with them, you know, getting on their level is, you know, like just little things. Like this year we made cookies and they just, you should have just seen them as they're cracking the eggs and they're, you know, they're measuring out the sugar and they're, and then they're rolling out their cookie dough and they're just, they're just enamored by the whole idea that they get to do adult things. And it's just absolutely the coolest thing when they're like, wait, you mean I get to do that? And I'm like, absolutely. You get to do this. It's just, it's just really cool to see them realize their own potential. And, and to realize that they can do certain things that mom and dad ain't going to yell at them, right? Right, like Play-Doh. <laughs> exactly. I hated Play-Doh. I still do. Uh, I think every parent hates Play-Doh. <laughs> I don't know. That that jelly, gooey, slime stuff, almost as bad. <laughs> almost as bad. Yeah, the good thing about I that is you can get it up a little easier. Say, Please don't send that. Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, I, I, I sent a lot home this year and... I'll probably hold off a little bit more next year. <laughs> <laughs> how how has the COVID nineteen affected preschool this year? <sighs> it's honestly been devastating. It's uh, you know the best. Well, the year is amazing all year long, but you really are just at this incredible spot March through May, because the kids literally act like siblings, and they're just so close and they're so excited to see each other. And I finally have the foundation built in every area. 
super deep. So then we can, we can go in so many branches at this point. And this is the fun part. This is when, you know, you're going on field trips and you're having parties and, and it's graduation time and, and just so much goes on the last three months of school. And so it's, it was devastating to have to close. And even though I'm grateful that we were able to continue in different ways, but um, it's, it's nothing like having the kids here. And thankfully I've been able to have some of the kids still, like they'll come over, like today I had two kids come over to drop off a, like a teacher appreciation. And I just, you know, just sit there and chat and I'm like, oh, I just wanna hug you guys so bad. So I still have this great connection with the kids. I try to send them videos. I try to, you know, I sent them postcards a couple of weeks ago, just little things to just constantly connect with them. I ask them, you know, send me a picture of the project you just made. So I, you know, I've had kids send me videos of themselves. So it's been really cool that we can still connect, but it's been just, I, I, I've cried more than once over <laughs> my preschoolers not getting to come. So are you doing fun. anything virtual with them? Yes, we are. So I, I've made a bunch of packets up. So, and those are intense and, uh, but full of stuff for them. And then we are doing some online learning together. Do you think it's going to be as beneficial as being in person? I, I mean, I hope, I hope it's still effective. I think because we have laid such a solid foundation for these kids up through March, I do think that they're still getting a lot of benefits. They're still gaining a lot, but there's nothing to replace in person. You know, the, the depth of, of just being able to have two and a half hours of, of just not necessarily instruction the whole time, but just the fact that you're there and the influence. The socialization. When they're, yeah. And, you know, kids are different when they're with their parents compared to with just the teacher. And, you know, like I, I can't sit there and fix their pencil grip, you know, like if, if, if it looks wrong because I can't do anything about it. Or like this last week, one of my little little girls was just crying and crying and I just wanted to reach through and just hug her because that's what I would have done had she been here. I would have just taken her in my arms and held her and let her cry. And then, you know, what, what can we do to fix this? And that's what I would have done. And I just was like, are you okay? Are you okay? You know, so there's those, those, those lacks that uh, we just can't, no matter how much we want to do, there's only so much that you can do. But had this happened in the fall, I don't, I think it would have been a much harder to set a foundation in the fall compared to in the spring. So I, that's why I still feel like we're being at least partly effective. So you did have pretty much the basics all done and oh, you were starting to, to transfer into it. Um, having COVID take place, how do you think preschool is going to change from it? Cause obviously we're not going to go back to the same America we were. How's preschool going to change? Do you think? You know, I'm, I'm actually very optimistic that it won't change that much. So even though I know that schools might look very, very different this fall, I am a private business. And so I know that there will be precautions. There might be some things like, you know, parents have to come in and sign the, the kids in. So maybe that will go away. And, you know, maybe I'll have to meet them at the door and I might have to do the temperature thing and you know, washing the hands as soon as they come in, washing hands numerous times, of course, sanitizing constantly, like I always do, but things like that, that I can see happening. But assuming that private businesses are allowed to stay open, I, I can foresee a, a, a normal nine month school year happening for us next, next fall. Okay. You think they'll have adaptions made? So if something like this happens again, that they won't be getting rid of the school they'll just have something in place for it i think so i mean they've tried you know like they've tried to already get us back open they're trying really hard to to make things happen and so i i mean you know america's built on small business so we got to get us open we got to keep us keep us running and yeah you know the kids are our future and so i think i i, I just feel like for us i at this point i have a full full hope and expectation that I'm starting the beginning of September. I think we will, you know, we're starting to see th things open. I think by September we'll be there. It looks like uh, we, we got a question for you, Heidi. 
uh, oh, one really? of our, our audience members, Isaac Sutphin. I know that guy pretty good. Um, any suggestion on how to help kids who miss their friends and their teachers? Oh, that's a great question, Isaac. <laughs> so, you know, it just depends on a couple of things. First of all, Zoom is great. Uh, Marco Polo is great. So I have four kids, granted they're teenagers, but that's probably even harder to not be able to see your friends as a teenager. And, you know, sometimes we just have to do hard things. And so we've talked about that, but for us, because we are doing so much Zoom, they do get to see each other. And that's, I think, helped a lot. They get to see me numerous times a week. And I think that's helped a lot. And, and as things lighten up, you know, hopefully as parents, you guys can make it happen. You know, like lately I've been letting if my kids want to get together with a friend, as long as they're using precautions and being careful, then, then we're letting it happen. So hopefully that can happen a little bit on your guys' end for your kids so that they can feel that connection. Because if there's one thing I've realized from COVID is that we really do need each other and we need to see each other face to face. Yeah. The human race is not uh, sit at home by yourself with no interaction with others. Right. We, we have to have that socialism. I mean, everybody has to have that. Uh, you, you mentioned earlier that you were doing more one-on-ones with the kids. Um, is Do you think a lot of teachers are doing that? I know that some teachers are, you know, some it, teachers aren't for, with my kids. I, yeah. I think it depends on um, ours is small groups and I think it just depends. Like I know my, my sister's school in Idaho is definitely way different compared to, you know, what's taken place here. And so uh, I, I think it depends on the teacher, honestly. So anyway, I think a it's a little it's different. Good. I'm sorry, say again. Every teacher is a little different. So maybe that's why. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't think there's a standard from what I've understood. And I've talked to some people who, you know, their friend, their sister lives in Texas and they're like done, you know, and other places that they've just literally canceled school and they're done. So I think our school districts tried to do a really good job of having that interaction as much as you can. But, you know, on the end of a teacher, you want to do everything, but to also realize that it's a lot harder than you thought to, to try to, you know, you're one, you're one to 24. And, but to 24, you're one. And so, and so uh, I, I definitely realize how much harder that is on my end. It, it's, I would take the kids at my house any day over having to do what we're doing right now. I, I really think our school district compared to some that I've, I've heard did a really good job. They were able to get the iPads out. Um, I've talked to a few friends down in Salt Lake that they're, they're, their kids are getting on their computers. They're not getting on iPads. So I really think that as, as a, a whole, that Sweetwater County District 1 did pretty good. I really do. I am incredibly impressed with our school district. I, you know, I have a senior this year, so I, I see both ends of it. I see the preschoolers not getting to graduate. I see a high schoolers not getting to graduate. And I am just incredibly impressed with our school district and how hard they've worked and tried to make our kids feel special and make sure that they know that, you know, this sucks. Yes. But, but we know, and we're here for you and we want you to know that we love you. And you can, you can just see that in, in the teachers and the, and the administrators and what they're trying to do for our, for our County. And it's huge. Do you plan on doing a graduation? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm actually waiting to find out what uh, the governor says next next Friday. See if you'll allow it. Out. Yeah, we got to look at, there's a lot of intricacies that go into a graduation. So we've got to see what, just, just what the new guidelines are. And of course, you know, we still have to fall into DFS guidelines, even though we're right. private business. So it's, it's a little bit of a waiting for him and then waiting for DFS to get their stuff out. So that we know what it is that we can do. If if can. you can't do an intimate graduation, are you going to do something virtual for the kids? Yes, we would definitely do something virtual. So I, I have a few few ideas, but just entirely not sure what's going to happen at this point. <laughs> so, but I've I've already been working on some ideas 
already got some stuff put together. And so hopefully whatever is decided, I can, I can pull it off really quickly based off of the ideas I've got. It's awesome. Uh, you mentioned that you take the kids on field trips and, and I thought this was really cool because Enzo just loved it. He, he thought it was great. Every time he went on a field trip, he had to wear a special shirt and he was so excited <laughs> to go do it. Um, just mention a couple of them to, to our viewers, what kind of field trips you do with them. Well, well, Lance, I think maybe we'll be coming to you this fall. <laughs> I got <laughs> Hendrick, but, but um, I'm fine with that. <laughs> you know, we do, we do our, the fun ones, like, you know, the, the library and, and the fire station, you know, kind of typical stuff. If we lived in a bigger, bigger city, there'd be a lot more opportunity, but we implement and utilize everything that we can. So it's good. Awesome. Uh, tell us how you kind of got into preschool. You didn't just fall into it, right? No, well, kind of. So I actually ran a daycare for four years in Idaho. Okay. And so I did that while my husband was in college. And so I had a lot of experience with kids and of course I had my own and I just love kids. And so when I, we moved out here, my friend started a preschool and offered to let me be her assistant. And it was just perfect because my youngest was of the age and well, I was originally going to teach, but we just couldn't get enough three-year-olds into the class. So I ended up just being an assistant, which is perfect because I was able to observe and then she ended up moving the next year, which just led into a perfect segue into <laughs> me starting my own. And so we got up and running and haven't looked back. Do you have like ultimate goals with preschool? I mean, as a business owner, I, I have goals for my business. Do you have something similar with preschool? They're Great question. I think, I mean, I've, of course I have my own goals personal business wise, but I think when it really comes down to it, it, it goes right back to the kids. It, it always comes back to how do I help these kids have a solid emotional, physical, and mental foundation. So that's, that's always my number one priority. And it's definitely where I spend most of my time and energy thinking and trying to do my best to improve it for them. I, you know, with having the smaller number in your class, do you think it's easier to stop? I mean, this was a big thing before schools got out about bullying. And um, obviously, as when we were kids, it wasn't much of a thing. But uh, do you think that having the smaller number helps control that better? Oh, definitely. It's it's incredible. You know, you, you see all sorts when you come. It, you, I've, you never know what you're going to get. And, and I realized that kids can, can be mean from a young age. And so the, the goal is to help them have empathy. The, the goal is to help them see each other as they see themselves as, you know, special human beings that have the same needs that they have. And it's pretty incredible. Kids are incredibly compassionate. And I think that's what I love about four-year-olds is even though there's times when they get into tiffs and they, they might uh, be a little mean to each other, it's not something you normally see. It's just at least not in a group of eight. And it's so cute how they watch out for each other. You know, I, every year I usually have at least one allergen child. And if I accidentally like, you know, I'm putting out goldfish or something, they're like, you know, beside you, beside you, beside you, he can't have that. You know, like they're just so compassionate and they're just, they're constantly have each other's backs. And yeah, they might fight over a toy, but it's so, I can't tell you how often, you know, they come crying and I hug them and then they would just walk right over and say, here, you can have the toy. And it's just, it's incredible to watch that emotional growth happen with, with little kids. And so, but I think it, it's huge in stemming, stemming bullying down the road, because if they can get a foundation now of, I don't have to be mean to somebody, I can learn how to talk to somebody. You know, I'm constantly trying to teach my own kids what I call win-win situations from Stephen R. Covey. And I try to do that same thing. Even though we don't call them win-win situations in four-year-olds, we still are looking for a win-win. Like, how can both of you be happy with the situation? How can both of you feel like you both got something you wanted? And 
it's amazing because by the end of the year, they are, they work it out themselves. I can just sit here and watch them literally work out their problems without even having to intervene. And it's really cool to watch. So that's a pretty influential age, the age of four. I know that when my Enzo was four, he was watching me like a hawk. And half the time, yeah. I didn't even know it. Um, <laughs> yeah. what, and he'd talk about you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what What do you realize that is probably the most important as parents for teaching our preschool kids? Oh, wow. Man. <laughs> Now there's a lot of aspects to that land. <laughs> <laughs> Take it however I mean, you want. Ultimately, okay, well, we'll go a different couple of places in here. Okay. Ultimately, let your kid make sure your kid knows how much you love them, and it's it's amazing what a difference that makes when they know that mom and dad love me, no matter what. You, the, the foundation that is, heals more than anything else, and most parents are incredible at that but it's just amazing how much of a difference that makes. Now on the academic side, <laughs> there's a lot of things you could do as a parent, but one of the biggest issues I'm seeing, and it's gotten way worse over the last couple of years is that there's just no fine motor skills and kids are coming in with less and less fine motor skills. And I have my own theories with that. Uh, well, you know, if they're on an iPhone, well, if you're on like an iPad more often, you know, you're not, you're not using your, your hands, you're just using your thumbs and, or your pointer finger. And I have a friend who's a speech therapist. And so she and I talk a lot about different things that we see with, with four-year-olds. And uh, she was telling me how one of her coworkers was talking about how kids aren't getting the gross motor skills. So it's, therefore it's not transferring into the fine motor because it always grows gross to fine. You know, because they may not be outside playing as often or, you know, just doing typical kid things that we did when we were kids. And and so I'm seeing that like I used to be able to get kids in a couple weeks holding the pencil correctly, being able to, to grip it correctly and be able to cut with scissors. And, and it's taken me about four months now, the last couple of years to get them to a level where they can do that on their own. And so wow. that's that's something I always highly encourage parents just. Let your kids play with Play-Doh. Let them carry gallons of jug milk jugs around. Let them, you know, just anything that manipulates their hands and strengthens them is huge. Do you think that effect, um, I make my boys work in the yard. So um, do you think that that's good? Or do you think oh, yeah. that it, so you, you would think that working in the yard or something like that, where they're out using their imagination or they're being creative, that's, that's really good for, for that age creativity is work you know and it's you wouldn't believe how creative these kids can get when you you know I, I mean I've watched your kids they do it and you know when they can turn a box into an airplane and, and and a rodeo and come up with their own games it's huge in everything it goes out into every other aspect you know it gives them critical thinking skills and it helps them think outside of the box and how, how what's another way to solve this issue and I mean it's the skills are immeasurable just being able to, to be able to um, be creative and, and come up with ideas. And of course, anything outside is, is great because you're going to get your fine and gross motor skills going. Fantastic. I really enjoyed this conversation. I've learned a lot about <laughs> preschool and, and I think school in general. I, I know that this has been a hard time for us parents. Um, I'm not a teacher. I do not have the patience of a teacher. And um, there's been several times that Jackson's learned that. <laughs> um, what would be some a piece of advice in closing here um, that you would give to the parents out there of how to help their children? That's a great question. You know, it's in the end, it's not going to matter what grade they get. It's not going to matter that, uh, they got that assignment done through a thousand tears. In the end, what matters is that you guys still have a strong relationship. And so, you know, if your kid is just done that day, that's okay. You're not a, you're not a failed parent and your kid's not, it's not a reflection on you as a parent that you didn't do your job in some way. You know, I tell my parents with the packets I sent home, if you don't want to do these that's fine, you know, and if your kids don't want to do them, that's fine. Don't, the idea here is not to meet some 
criteria standard, you know, like, mm. yeah, a criteria that we've, we've got for ourselves or for our kids so that they fit in in some way. That's not the end goal. You know, the end goal is to have a strong relationship. And so it's okay if your kid's tired that day. It's okay if, okay if your kid's had it up to their eyeballs that day, let them go play, you know, give, give them a chance to recharge. We're the same way we're done. And, you know, we let ourselves do it. So, so just give your kids that same leniency and love. And it's, it's going to go far. I need to take that to heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I have to, I mean, it's kids adore their parents. And that's the thing is, that's typically what I hear. I hear some really funny stories, sure. But in the end, what I typically hear is how much they love and adore their parents. And it's pretty amazing to see the influence that parents have like I wish parents realized how much influence they had over their children because it's it's pretty amazing to watch when you know I remember Enzo I want to shave my head just like my daddy I want to you know it just is the constant constant conversation of how can I emulate my parents and so you know parents you're doing a good job don't beat yourself up it's not it's not what our kids need our kids need us to just love them as they are and love ourselves as we are so that we can give ourselves fully to them. Awesome. Great words of advice. How can somebody get a hold of you, Heidi, if they want to sign their kids up for preschool? And I know you've got a pretty long list. <laughs> that, that is true. I recommend calling soon, but, um, but nonetheless, you never know, you know, like I've had, sometimes you have people move and all of a sudden you have plenty of openings. So don't ever feel like you can't call please call. I would love to talk to you and I'd love to, to meet your child and I'd love to have them in my class. So um, the, there's, I have a phone number, of course, that I can give you if you like, but most people, if they don't have my phone number, just message me through Facebook Messenger. That's typically how I get most contacts, but uh, I'm happy to give you my phone number if that's also, I love text. You can text me anytime. And if they can't get a hold of you, they can definitely get a hold of us here at Aspen Mount Plumbing and we can send them your direction. So, absolutely. Uh, Thank you. And ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us tonight. It's been a great conversation. Hopefully, we've learned something as, as a public about our children, the influence we can be, and, and what they need as far as education, especially these hard times where we're trying to finish up school. Congratulations to Rachel on her graduation. Thank you. And uh, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thank you, Lance. It was great to chat with you. Have a great night. See Folks, you Heidi, Sh <laughs> see ya. F Heidi Schuler of Superstars Preschool. What a wonderful Liao. I personally have had my, my son in her classes. He learns a lot. He had a great time. If you are looking for somebody to get your children into, this is a great person to reach out to. She'll teach your children exactly what they need for kindergarten. She's given us some great advice as parents. Hopefully you can take that to heart and apply it. Have a wonderful night and we'll catch you next Friday night.